Because a phrase yet filled with joy pretty much sums up my expectations for 2015. <laughs> I, my resolution is that my joy overcome my fear at all times. Amen. My outlook for 2015 is there's going to be ample opportunity for me to be afraid and joyful throughout this entire year here. And my plan is to try to reconcile these two together on a daily and sometimes moment by moment basis here. I believe he's talking here about a, a healthy fear, a healthy respect. I was in shop class one time and I had a uh, shop teacher who was giving us all the safety briefings on the different pieces of equipment that we were gonna get to play on that year. And he told me that the moment that I lost that healthy fear, that healthy respect for the equipment that I was using was the moment I was gonna become bad at math like he was. Because he went from being able to count to five to only being able to count to three. Makes math a little harder sometimes. <laughs> a healthy respect, a healthy fear, coupled with great joy is what I'm looking forward to in 2015. Let's go ahead and go to the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, just want to thank you for this day. Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity to gather together. Lord, I just want to pray for your presence here in a mighty way. And that, Lord, as we look at your word, that you would just teach us something new about you here today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The story we find in the beginning of Matthew 28 just lends itself wonderfully to a new year. I mean, after all, it occurred on the first day of the week. And if we would have asked the principal characters, these two ladies whose names are Mary here, about their week, they would have told us about all the goals, all the aspirations, all the dreams that they may have had coming for this week here. And I have a lot of goals for 2015 here as well. But before they can begin on their week and the things that they have planned, there's something that they need to take care of. A task that they didn't quite get to the previous week. I can empathize with that because unfortunately in just a few days, 2015 is going to be here whether I'm ready or not. And unfortunately there are things that I'm going to carry into the new year that I probably should have addressed this year and just like them, maybe ran out of time in order to get them done. They leave out early in the morning to take care of this task here. They're going to anoint the body of Jesus. They brought with them some spices, some perfumes, some different ointments and stuff. And I read somewhere that it wasn't unheard of for all of this to weigh about 50 pounds. And these two ladies are dragging this burden with them all the way out to the tomb there. And I can empathize with that too because I am all about carrying burdens far longer than I possibly should. <laughs> Things that maybe I should leave in this year, I'm probably going to still have on my back when I enter the new year here. As they're going along and they're talking with one another, I'm sure the conversation turned to what they witnessed on Friday. They knew where Jesus' tomb was. They knew where he had been laid. They also saw the stone that had been rolled in. They saw the men having to exert themselves to try to get this stone into place here. They knew that there were guards that were around there. And I'm sure as they were going on this track, burdened down with the things that they were carrying, they were probably talking to one another, and it probably went like a conversation that I have a lot of times in my head. How am I going to do this? How am I going to move the stone? How am I going to convince these guards to allow me access in there in order to accomplish the task that I'm wanting to do? As they're going along and they're talking here with one another, suddenly it says a violent earthquake occurred. I would imagine, just with the burden and the suddenness of it coming on here, that it probably threw them to the ground. I can empathize with that too. Sometimes I'm just walking along, minding my own business it seems, <laughs> when suddenly the entire world turns upside down. They get up, they dust themselves off, and they round the last corner and there is a scene that they could not have comprehended if they had been told what to expect whenever they turned the corner there. 
For instead of a bunch of guards and a sealed tomb, what they found was the tomb now unsealed. This huge rock that took all these men to move into place here suddenly has been thrust aside, much the same with an effort that we would do a pebble. The guards, these big, tough, burly soldiers of the Roman Empire, lay scattered about all in the little clearing here. They thought at first they were dead, but they can see them breathing. They know now that they've just fainted. And the whole reason for everything appears to be this angel that's sitting on top of the stone, I'm sure with a smug look of satisfaction on his face. <laughs> Utter confusion had to have reigned. I like to tell folks I'm a native son of the great state of Texas. However, my current state and where I normally reside is the state of confusion because I stay there quite a bit. The scene makes no sense to them. It wasn't what they were expecting. And yet they see the angel, give them a little beckoning, why don't you come closer? And look at what the angel says here. Matthew 28 and verse 5. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Tuesday night, our small group, we looked at the Christmas story. We looked at several different passages in there. Every single time that the angel appeared to either Mary or Joseph or the shepherds, the first words out of their mouth was, do not be afraid. Not that healthy fear, that healthy respect for what's going on. No, this is that mind-numbing, gut-wrenching, paralyzing fear. And the angel saying, that's not, that's not needed here. Look at the next thing he says. I know that you're looking for Jesus. See, sometimes in my confusion, sometimes in my circumstances, I tend to forget who I'm actually looking for. But my God knows down deep inside whenever I'm trying to do whatever it is that I'm doing here that what I'm really looking for is Jesus the whole Amen. time. And he's willing to take the extra effort to go out there and have this angel sit on top of this rock on a beautiful Sunday morning he probably had better things to do himself, but he's sitting there waiting for these two to come up because he says, I know that you're looking for Jesus. This earth-moving angel who created all this havoc suddenly turns into the Holy Land's first tour guide. He invites them to come on in. Take a look at the empty tomb. Get a good mental picture here that Jesus is no longer there. Jesus is risen. Get the joy starting to build in your heart that your Savior just conquered death in the grave. Amen. And the problems that you thought you had, the burdens that you thought were so heavy, the confusion that you thought was so pervasive in your mind, suddenly fade away when you get a realization that your Savior conquered death in the grave. They suddenly come in, they see the place, and if the story would have ended there, we would have thought how wonderful it was that God reached out to these two ladies here. But the very next words here, in verse 7, that the angel says, Then go quickly and tell his disciples. Go and tell. Sounds like maybe another passage in Matthew 28 there. It's the same story. Now that you have this realization... Share it with someone else. He tells them to go tell the disciples. Think about their mental state this morning as they woke up. That mind-numbing, gut-wrenching, paralyzing fear, that was them that morning. Broken, that was them this morning. Confused as to what was going on, that was them this morning. God's message does best for folks who are in that state. And he, the angel tells them, go, share this message with everyone. Share it with the disciples. The ladies take off. Our verse of the day, Matthew 28, 8, having looked at the story here, says they hurriedly left. Other gospel writers say they ran. Where was the burden? Where was the confusion? Where was all the plans? It's a good thing the tomb's empty. It can hold a lot more stuff now. They left all that behind and they ran to go tell 
this great joy that they had. They went to share with these disciples. And they left full of joy, it says, but they were also maybe a little bit afraid as they left. I don't think they were afraid of the disciples physically. I mean, they were rough and tumble men. Lord didn't call 12 pastry chefs to go with them. He called real men. <laughs> but they weren't physically afraid of them. I think they were a little afraid at the magnitude of what they had to share. The magnitude of this great news. And were they up to the task that they were being asked to do? Afraid yet filled with joy is again my earnest desire for myself here coming in 2015. I don't know whether the Apostle Paul had this story in mind. No doubt he had heard it several times in his travels and in his dealings with the, with the apostles. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, go ahead and turn there. 2 Corinthians, about five, six books over to the right. Somebody with one of the black Bibles holler out a page number when you get there. What, Russ? Yes, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 805. Paul here writing a letter. He takes a little time and he spends a few moments and in the notes of my Bible, because I'm, I'm really big on marking up your Bible, I have a little arrow out beside 517 through the end of the chapter here. And in my margin, I wrote, afraid yet filled with joy. Let me start in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, Paul writes, meaning because of what I've said before, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. Fills me with great joy, that word is. Present tense, right now, today. I wasn't a new creation. I'm not going to be a new creation. I am a new creation, right here, right now. <clears throat> Fills me with great joy, but it also gives me a little bit of a little bit of fear, a little bit of proper sober-minded thought here, in that there is an if statement that I have to satisfy in order to see this new creation live out. It's at the very beginning of 17. If anyone is in Christ. If I'm not in Christ, I'm back to old Tom. The old way has come back. But if I'm in Christ, right now, today, tomorrow, come March, come June of this coming year here, I'm still that new creature. I have a new way to think. I have a new way to speak. I have a new way to act. And that should give me a, the proper respect, the proper fear, in that I need to satisfy that if statement on a day-by-day, moment-by-moment basis here. I love verse 18. All this is from God. All of this, all of my life, this ministry, all the different aspects that we just prayed for up here, all of this is from God. Believe me, it wasn't my bright idea to do all this. There's been several times me and Brent were like, we need to do something else here. All this is from God. Get that in the proper context. It came from Him. And it says, Who reconciled us to Himself through Christ. And if He'd have stopped right there, we'd have had a wonderful verse, full of joy. All of this comes to us from God, who reconciled us to Him, who gave us that experiential knowledge that the tomb is empty, that my Savior has risen. And that because he conquered the grave and death, he can probably handle the circumstances that I'm seeing in my life right now without a whole lot of issue. But he doesn't. He doesn't end there, he says, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm an us. That's what you are. You are a minister of reconciliation. 
People call on the phone all the time over at the center. I answer the phone and they're like, oh, Pastor Tom. I immediately shut them down at that point right there. I am not Pastor Tom. But it says right here, I am a minister. And that should put the proper thoughts in my mind that my next word, my next action is going to get judged as that of a minister. We kind of put them on a higher pedestal. We assume that they're going to act correctly in Christ's life at all times. Mm -hmm. And that saying follows suit for us because we're ministers of reconciliation. In case you were wondering what this reconciliation ministry kind of looks like, he goes on in, in verse 19 here. Mm -hmm. To give us what the message is. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Again, there's that word us. That's my job now. To go out and spread this good news that your sins aren't counted against you. That you don't have to live with that shame on your head anymore. That we have a Christ, we have a Savior who is risen. And because of that, he can overlook our sins and forgive us our sins and allow us a new opportunity to be this new creation here. Amen. We are therefore, in verse 20 now, we are therefore Christ ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. If you ever get a chance to, to meet an ambassador, every single thing that they do is scrutinized by the host country where they are living at because it represents the United States of America to them. Sometimes the only America they know is through the acts, the words of the ambassador that's there. We're the ambassador for God's kingdom in this world right here. This world is still filled with broken, confused, Fear paralyzed men who desperately need to hear this message that Christ is risen. And our very actions, our words, how we go about our life speak way more volume than any book that they might ever want to read. And in fact, it's because of those actions a lot of times that people get interested in reading the Word of God. Every single thought, every single word, every single action I need to have the proper mindset that this is real. This can be the matter between life and death to the folks that I'm interacting with right then. And every action, every word that I hope to speak or do in 2015 gets summed up here at the very tail end of verse 20. Be reconciled to God. Get into the same relationship that I've got. An ambassador, a minister, Seemed hard for me to comprehend. I'm a redneck from East Texas. <laughs> I can't imagine that anyone would want me to be either of those. And yet God is placing that trust in my hands. Amen. And he's given me a corner of the world to be that minister in. And that causes me a little fear. Just a little bit of healthy respect of what I need to do. Yet it also fills me with great joy that he's given me this opportunity to do it. He gives me people, he's going to give me folks all through 2015 to take this message to, Amen. to share this with them. I don't know what's in store for any of y'all in 2015. I'm not real sure what's in store for me in 2015. I know that I have different desires. I have some goals that I'd like to accomplish. I know that the ministry has some goals and stuff that they would like to accomplish. And they seem daunting if I look at them through my eyes only. $3.5 million. That seems like a healthy sum if you're looking at my bank account right now, today, this morning. But I also know that I serve a God who conquered death in the grave. $3.5 million, not really going to concern him a whole lot there. He's able to handle those things. And because of that, I have great joy going into this year. And because of that, I also have a little bit of fear. Am I up to the task? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you again for this time. Lord, this opportunity that we get to start a new year.
And Lord, I just want to pray that we would satisfy that if statement every single day, every single moment, that we remain in you for this entire year coming up. Lord, I want to thank you for the goals, the dreams that you have put in our minds for ourselves and for this ministry or whatever ministry we happen to be a part of. And Lord, I just pray that you would satisfy each and every one of those because it's only through you that they will be. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.